at the age of 16. In 1891, my great-great-grandfather, Frederick Leupold, said goodbye to his parents in Augsburg, Germany, and boarded a ship to the United States. Like a lot of uh, teenagers at the time in Europe, there was the opportunity to come to the United States and kind of strike it out on your own and forge a new path. While he was in Boston, he met a Polish immigrant named Adam Vopel. They quickly formed a friendship that would ultimately develop into a partnership. They did open a small shop in, uh, in downtown Portland in 1907 where they repaired surveying and manufacturing equipment. In 1914, J.C. Stevens, who was an inventor, an engineer, and hydrologist, he would came up with a lot of great ideas and products that ultimately helped fuel the, uh, the growth of Leupold and Stevens for its first 40 years. This is Marcus and Ruth Leupold's daughter Georgia seen here working at the company during the World War II years. Uh, this is my grandmother Georgia Leupold. She is 91 years old and the oldest living uh, Leupold and Stevens family members. In, uh, in the 1940s Marcus Leupold was in the Oregon Coast Range which is extremely wet and rainy and Marcus Leupold at the time was hunting black-tailed deer. He uh, took a shot at a, a nice buck but missed the shot because his scope had fogged up and it was, it was tremendously disappointing for him. And after that, he said, damn it, we could build a better scope than that. And that's what he said back at the factory. And he took that passion for having such a disastrous day and turned it into a tremendous opportunity. He, uh, he had the factory make a, a waterproof rifle scope, which is exactly what we ended up releasing in 1947. And in 2007, Leupold and Stevens celebrates its 100th anniversary. This was a tremendous feat for us. To be a, a family-owned company that's in its fifth generation to last to 100, to 100 years is very rare. And now we're about in our 110th year. This is an image from uh, about two years ago at one of our family assemblies that we have where all of the family members come together. So it's, it's, it's a great company to work for. We've got 700 employees and every one of those employees feels like a family member to me. I know most of all their names and it's, it's just a great place to work. This is Tim O'Connor with the, I'm inside the Loopholes Technical Service Department. Uh, we have about 13 operators that are taking phone calls, emails, and walking customers from up front. Uh, they are kind of the technical wizards of the loophole product and how it's applied in either hunting or shooting applications. Uh, they're also kind of our voice of the customer. They hear what the customer is thinking, what they want or what they're concerned about or uh, what troubles they're having with the product. So they can bring that to our engineers and our product development folks and get things either fixed or designed differently. So this is a loophole custom shop. We have about a dozen people down here that take orders and build scopes and laser engrave. Uh, they do. They build up new scopes with custom modifications, or they can retrofit existing scopes if you send them in. Uh, they'll laser engrave images on the scope. They'll do reticle changes to custom reticles. Uh, they can build you a BDC dial custom for your ballistic caliber. Uh, they can also do custom anodizing on the scopes in different colors, and they do some other simple modifications like gold-plated gold ring and medallion and things like that. The custom shop's been in place since 2005 and we modify basically everything out there in the inventory that we have so far. So we've been building scopes here since 1947 so that product we get scopes in that are, are that old and uh, we even get scopes in that have uh, reticles that are made out of black widow web. We go back that far in our technology and uh, some of those scopes are able to be serviced and cleaned up and sent back to the customers and sometimes we have to replace them. Loophole product service has about 25 people working in it and they service about 30,000 scopes a year. Uh, of the scopes that come in that 30,000, less than 5% of them actually have something wrong, although we do a lot of uh, cleaning and, and uh, making sure that the scopes are working right before we send them back to the customer. Every Loophole Gold Ring product has an unlimited lifetime warranty and the scope is either going to be repaired or if it can't be repaired it's going to be, re be replaced and if we don't have the exact same product we will put you in the same uh, comparable product or we'll have to upgrade you if, if we can't do that. Tim O'Connor here in the Merwin Webb rifle range underneath the offices at Leupold and Stevens. Uh, the rifle range was built in about 1969 when they were building this facility and we have hundred yards to the target here and we have uh, quite a bit of electronics here. We have an Ailer system that we use for chronograph and it actually does uh, some electronic targeting with microphones. Uh, we use this facility to test product and to develop new product and to test competitive products 
Uh, we can shoot uh, anything up to 50 caliber BMG in the tunnel here. We're here at Leupold and Stevens in Beaverton, Oregon. We are in the raw materials area right now. Today we're here to show you around our facility where we're one of the largest scope manufacturers in the world. Uh, we start from a raw material, we make the parts, we uh, finish the parts, we put the parts together, we test the scopes, and we ship the scopes, all from right here in this facility. Uh, as you can see, the raw materials come in various shapes. The idea always is to get the raw material to closest to the near net shape of the part that you're making. You see this is a tubing right here, it's hollow in the middle. This is a custom size for us. Uh, we don't have a lot of area where we keep the bar stock anymore because we're constantly expanding with our equipment. Uh, we're going to walk through some of the machining areas and we're going to show you some of the things that we've perfected over the years and the, and the various techniques we use to save money and keep costs down and try to keep Leupold one of the most uh, affordable uh, values out there for uh, hunting and shooting optics. Okay, well here at Leupold we're always looking for ways to save money and uh, work more efficiently. One way we do that is we actually recycle all of our aluminum chips that we use here. We do use primarily aluminum in our product. Uh, by keeping the 6061 alloy separate and, com and compacting it into these pucks, we get a higher return rate on our recycled materials, so that helps us uh, pass that savings on to the customer as well. Over here you can see these big tanks behind me. Uh, those are used to filter uh, the coolant that we use in the machine. So instead of bringing, dirt, sending dirty coolant out, bringing it back in, back and forth in the trucks and the barrels, we just simply recycle it by filtering it and reusing it over and over again. So it's a, another great way to uh, keep costs under control. Uh, it takes a lot of parts to make a rifle scope, depending on the complexity of the rifle scope. And uh, at Leupold, uh, we're starting from the ground up, right from the bar stock, with the components, with the assembly, the final assembly, and everything to ensure that we control that quality through the whole process. It's a very simple wash process. This main tube will be used for a VXR 3x9x40 scope. This hole you see right here, this is where the fiber optic will go from the turret down to the reticle in order to have the red dot visible inside the scope. What this part will be used for is an adjustable objective that allows the customer or consumer to focus the scope at any, at any distance that removes the parallax. And only on high magnification is it required. When you turn the, 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 the dial, it'll be on the objective here. It'll move the lens back and forth, and that's where it'll allow the scope to focus at any distance. This will probably be for a, a 6 to 18 by 40 millimeter VX2. Okay, we're in the tool crib and the gauge crib. Uh, this is where we house all the tooling for the machines. Uh, most of this tooling is custom made, as you just saw how some of it is made here. Um, we also keep all the gauges that we're required to measure all the parts. So anyway, this is where we, where we do our quality control for our first operations. Okay, I'm standing here with Bruce Pettit, uh, one of the employees down here in the machine shop area. Bruce, what's your role down here? I'm the senior lead person to the training center. And so uh, how many shifts a day are we running down here? Two shifts. Two shifts a day, 10 hours a shift? Yeah. So almost, so we can, how many days a week? Seven days a week. Seven days a week, okay. So how many years have you been here now? Uh, now 26. 26 years, so 26 years sounds like a long time. However, there's over 120 people that have been here over 20 years. Uh, there's also, I believe 60 people that have been here over 30 years. It's a good place to work because? Oh, I love it. It's family owned and they care about us. Yeah, how about making a quality product with a lifetime guarantee? Oh yeah, that's, that's number two. That's number two, yeah. <laughs> Great place to work. Bruce, keep up the good work. Thanks, sir. Thank you. What we're looking at here is a multi-spindle machine. Every time the machine gets done with its cycle, a part comes off the machine. These small parts used to be run at, oh, maybe 24 to 36 an hour on a single spindle machine. Now we're able to run them uh, at five or six times that speed on a multi-spindle machine. 
Here's some examples of the parts that the multi-spindle machines make. Uh, here was a small erector lens holder we saw coming off the machine briefly. Uh, this is a adjustment nuts for, uh, for the uh, windage and, uh, and elevation on the scopes. This here is going to be a uh, uh, goes on the eye, the part you're going to look through the scope, eyepiece uh, lock nut. Oh, all right, we're in our tool room now where we make all of the tools uh, for our assembly area. Uh, we do make some of the tools for the machine shop as well in here. Uh, we have everything from CNC to the old Hardings and Bridgeport uh, mills and lays. Uh, this is George Chia. He's been with us. How many years have you been with us now, George? 28. 28 years. So George and I were hired about the same time back in 19... <laughs> back in 1988. Yep. And what did you start here? What department did you start in? Uh, I started assembly. You started in assembly? Yeah, after I finished school, I started assembly for like six months before I moved down here. So you've been in the tool room since 1992. Yep. It's getting a little tougher to find people with Georgia skills, but uh, we do bring a lot of them up ourselves here. We have apprenticeship programs. Yeah, we have two, uh, two apprentices, one on swing, one on lay right now. Right now, yeah. great, yeah. So. Getting ready for people to retire. <laughs> Thank you, George. You're welcome. Yes. We're watching a large piece of aluminum being milled for the assembly area. It's going to be a large fixture for scope uh, assembly. All right, what Mike is doing here is he's, he's uh, hand sanding the larger part to make sure the finish is just right before the bead blast process. Uh, we don't need to do this with the smaller parts, but the larger parts we do this, and this ensures that all the parts are going to have the equivalent uh, finish. We're in the bead blast area right now uh, where the second ops are being done to the parts. This is to make sure that when the part comes back from anodized, it'll be a matte finish. You see the operator wearing gloves. That's because when he handles the part after the bead blast, if he didn't have the gloves on, his fingerprints would show up on the part. What's as important as a fine quality optic on your rifle? Mounting that optic on your rifle. A loop hold, we've been making uh, mounts for uh, over 50 years. Uh, we currently uh, make our rings out of strike forge steel. This is, this is a strike forge process done in the Midwest. Uh, they ship them out here to us. We take these blanks, simply just put them into the machine here. So we put the blank in on the other side. It's gone through the uh, operation, uh, through the uh, CNC machine. And coming out the other side is a finished part. Let me get Terry here to go ahead and, and stamp one for us. I left my rag up there. Here we have an example of some precision machine bases. This, this, this part has been through the first operation. It's had the windage features put in it for what we call our standard mounts. Once it gets through the second operations, it's going to look like this. This is how we make our bases. Uh, all of our rings and bases, all of our steel is, is made in the USA. And we, uh, oh, we currently mount over 350 firearm manufacturers. Um, about 40,000 different configurations and uh, basically lock it down with loop holds when you're choosing your mounts because you, you know they're going to hold it. Uh, we saw the parts being made in the first operations area. Uh, these parts, then we saw them go to the bead blast or second operations area. These parts have been out to the anodizer and back. Uh, we don't do the anodizer here in house, but it is done locally. Uh, these parts have also been to the laser engrave area where it's had a serial number put on there and the loophole uh, branded and this particular one is for the uh, Quality Deer Management Association. Now there's also uh, other ones that would say USA design, machine and assembled. Uh, we can't say made in the USA because we do we don't make the glass. We do make everything else though so uh, that's why we don't say made in the USA. So we're in the stock room now where all the parts are gathered before they go into the clean room, which is our assembly area. These parts are going to be washed through these washers. Uh, about 100 and, 
120 up to 120,000 parts a day can go through these washers. As much as a million parts a day can go into our assembly area. So we're seeing the parts going in, into on the tray there, going into the assembly area. So that's uh, where we're going to kind of take a look at that next. All right. Well, I'm standing here. Behind me is the, our, our scope assembly area. We have over 150 people that work here on two shifts a day. Uh, they start about 5 o'clock in the morning and go till about 10 o'clock at night. Pretty hard to hire somebody that's trained how to build a rifle scope. So we have to bring them in and train our own people on how to build rifle scopes. It takes about two years to become an assembler two and about another four years to become an assembler three. Here we have some Delta Point Pros that are going through the assembly process here in the final line. Not quite finished yet, but they're in process. A fabulous red dot sight. All right, I'm standing here with Nora. Nora, how many years have you been here? 32. 32 years. So she's put these scopes down into this tank and she's checking for leaks. You see a couple bubbles, that's okay. But if she were to see a lot of bubbles, we would know that that scope had a problem. Now here's some of the final pieces to go on the scope. Uh, this is one most people are familiar with. This is the dial that you would use to change your, uh, well, let's see, it says here, one quarter MOA, U for up. So this is gonna adjust the elevation on a rifle scope. Well, we've made the parts for the scopes. We've, we've uh, done the sub-assemblies. We've put the scopes together. Uh, they've made it through the final line, all the testing and checking. Uh, they've made it through packaging, and now they've been scanned onto this cart where they're going to get wheeled to our distribution center and shipped out all over the world. Uh, we, this is the only place we make loophole scopes, uh, right here in Beaverton. Again, there's your gold ring. That's your lifetime warranty. Uh, everybody here knows that that's a lifetime warranty, so we try to make everything right the first time so that we never see the scope again. Well, I hope you've enjoyed looking into the inside of Loopold and Stevens rif Rifle Scope Manufacturing. Uh, we did want to emphasize the word manufacturing and manufacturer so that you can see that we're not just simply an assembly house or somebody that's uh, branding a scope that's made somewhere else. We do start with a raw material and finish up with a finished good product. Uh, you got to see the craftsmanship, uh, the care, and, and the pride that people put in their work around here. And I hope you enjoyed the tour as much as we've enjoyed showing it to you today. Really thank you for your time and uh, hope we haven't tried to squeeze too much in too fast.